Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. I'm going to be uh, speaking a message today that I've called The Furnace. And uh, we've already talked about it, but yesterday I spent a lot of time in the sun. And I don't know if you've ever spent a lot of time in the sun but, and thought you were tough. Sunscreen won't help, right? You know what I'm talking about? I don't need that. It's oily and gross, right? I don't need sunscreen. That was me last yesterday. And the thing about me is I don't wear shorts like ever. Like, to be honest, like pretty much ever do I wear shorts. But yesterday I thought, shorts day, right? I'm telling you, I don't think I've ever had a worse sunburn on my calves in my entire life. Like, it's like, it's like, it's painful right now. I woke up this morning, I thought, should I call in burnt to church? You know, like, like am I going to be okay? Like, like, and then I said that to Beth, and she's like, this was yesterday. She's like, you got, you got to go. I was like, yeah, I know, I know. But, you know, in life, we all have things that, that like, bring adversity. Not that, like, the sun was my adversity, right? Like, I could have been smarter. Um, but we all have things in life that bring adversity, things that come up that are painful, things that come up that we don't expect, moments in life that we, that, that, that we just don't know are going to come, and then they come. And oftentimes those moments come very fast, right? The things that we don't expect, they come fast because we weren't expecting them. And there's so many moments that we go through life where adversity plays a big part in our story. And so what we're going to do today is I want to go through a story today of adversity and how they responded to adversity, some of the revelations they had during this, this time as they went through the furnace. And you might know that we're going to be talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego today. If you don't know these guys, these guys were incredible uh, men uh, through Scripture in Daniel chapter 3. So we're going to be going through Daniel chapter 3, and we're going to be pretty much reading the entirety of Daniel chapter 3 today. So there's a lot that we're going to go through. We're going to go through this whole story. But in Daniel Daniel chapter 3, verse 1, it says this. King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then he sent messages to the high officers, the officials, the governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the provincial officials to come to the dedication of the statue he had set up. So all these officials came and stood before the statue King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald shouted, uh, shouted out, people of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, pipes, and other musical instruments, bow to the ground to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into the blazing furnace. So at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people, whatever their race or nation or language, bowed to the ground and worshiped the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed on the Jews that they, that they had said to King Nebuchadnezzar, long live the king. You issued a decree requiring all the people to bow down and worship the gold statue when they hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments. That decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown in to the blazing furnace. So this is how we start Daniel chapter 3. Obviously, recap, the king builds this 90-foot statue and says, everybody has to worship this statue anytime you hear music of any sorts. You got to worship this statue. And if you know this story, there's one thing that I think is so unique about this and something that I think we need to kind of inherit as followers of Jesus is that we need to learn to stand when no one else is standing. You know, a lot of us in our, in our culture, we're so afraid that we, that we're so afraid of standing out that we become like everyone else in our society, right? We, we're so afraid to stand out. We're so afraid to stand up for what we believe in. We're so afraid 
that we just let things go and we start walking as if we're just part of the normal when the reality is we're supposed to stand when no one else is standing. We're supposed to stand out. We're supposed to be different. We're supposed to stand up and we're supposed to stand out, stand out because of our relentless faith in Jesus. And I think a lot of us, if you look at our life, there's so many people that wouldn't even know we're followers of Jesus because of how we act outside of our Christian circle and our Christian friends. Based on how we act when we're at, at work or how we act when we're at home and then we come to church and we, we, we just pretend and we're like going through the motions. We're supposed to be different. We're not supposed to look like everyone else. We're not supposed to act like everyone else. People are supposed to look at us and say, what's different about you? What's different about you? That's how we are supposed to be seen. See, everyone else was bowing down to the statue. Everyone was bowing down. They become so, so accustomed to the culture, so accustomed to the tradition, they had been almost brainwashed and said, this is just what we do, how, this is how we survive in this land. I don't really want to go to the furnace because it says immediately, I don't want to be thrown in there. That sounds like painful. It sounds like my yesterday. And that, I'm telling you, you don't want that. And this is what happened is that it just, everyone was just bowing down, going through the motions, just be like, okay, I don't want to die, so I'm just going to go and do what everything I'm supposed to be doing. But if, you, if we continue reading, you're going to see that, they, that those three men, they stood up and said, I'm not bowing down to this. You know, in Matthew 5, verse 13 says this, you are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it's lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. And then verse 14, you are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden, you are the light of the world. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. See, what was happening to them is that they had the light, but they had gone through so much adversity. They had gone through so much pain They'd gone through so many things that they started to hide their light. And in some, in some instances, they actually let their light actually burn out. Not only did they hide it, they weren't letting it burn out. Because this is the truth. It's just because it's light doesn't mean everyone's going to like it. I think sometimes we think that I'm the light of the world. Everyone's going to love me. Probably not. Like we think like, yes, like the, the light of the world. And we're going and, and we're like, why are people so mad at me? How come my coworkers won't talk to me? And we're like, God, like where are you? He's like, keep being the light. Keep standing when no one else is willing to stand. Our faith has the power to change things. Our faith has the power to shift the faith of those around us. We bring light into the dark world. And we have to expect pushback. We have to expect the enemy. We have to expect that the, the, the darkness is going to try and fight. But the beauty is, is that wherever light is, darkness can no longer exist. That actually darkness bows at the name of Jesus. So we're so scared of the darkness that we don't realize the power of the light. We're so scared of what's happening. We're so scared of the darkness that we actually forget that we carry the light of the world. We're so afraid of what people will think, so we cover it. And then we let it shine when we're around the right people. Do not let your light go dim or don't let it go out. Don't cover your light. The light is supposed to be shone for everyone to see it. The goodness of who God is. So the question is, is that when you face adversity, when you face persecution, what do you do? Do you cave to the pressure? Or do you stand strong as we're about to read next in this story? 
Daniel 3, 12. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought to him, before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I've set up? You refuse? He says, I'll give you one more chance. It's interesting because before he said immediately, he says, I'm going to give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, then you'll be immediately thrown into the, fire, the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able, uh, then, then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar. I love that part. O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But this part right here, I really want to focus here. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. That's, that's some strong faith right there in that moment. Right? Even if he doesn't. Even if we're thrown in and we die, we will never worship this statue. Even if he doesn't. They even say, we don't even have to defend ourselves, right? He's like, I'm going to give you one more chance. He goes, they go, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves. I, I don't need to justify. I don't need to explain to you all I'm going to say is my God will rescue me, and even if he doesn't, we'll still keep standing. The faith of even if I don't see, even if I don't see the miracle, I will keep on standing. Even if he doesn't, a lot of us, we, we've gone through life and we've seen movies about this and we have friends who do this. God, if you do this, then I'll start going to church, right? God, if you give me the promotion and the $100,000 pay raise, then I'll start giving. If you do this, then I'll do this. What we're doing is we're saying, God, we're saying, God, what I want is more important. Even if he doesn't, we try and test God to make us believe in him. Like, God, prove it. Prove it. That's a lot of us. We're asking God, prove it. But what if our faith was less about even what we see? It's more about who we serve. What if our faith was even less on what we see? It's like, God, yes, the circumstances might be horrible. Yes, it's painful. But God, I'm going to keep on standing. I'm going to keep on worshiping you no matter what. What if that's where our faith was? Do you know where a lot of our fear comes? It's the opposite of that. We only have faith when we see it. And so what happens is we're so afraid. What if you never see the promotion? What if? Where will your faith lie in him if you don't see the things you're believing for? What if? You know, what these men were believing for was pretty, a big deal. Because it was their entire life. Like, they were believing that God was going to rescue them, right? And they, they had full faith he was going to do it, right? They said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't, have to, we don't have to convince you. All we have to know is that God will rescue us, and then we're going to prove who our God is. And even if he doesn't, so we can have faith that God's going to provide. We can have faith that he's going to do it, but we can also have faith even if he doesn't. 
Some of us, our faith is so based on what we see him doing. And yes, God does amazing things. He will provide. He'll bring miracles. He'll bring healing. I truly believe this. I really, really do. But even if he doesn't, will you still have faith? Even in the midst of adversity, will you still stand strong? Faith enough to face your deepest fears and face your deepest insecurities and face the deepest, darkest parts of your soul. Will you have faith to do it? We have faith in the one who loves you so much and cares so deeply about you that even if we don't see the blessing, we keep on worshiping. That even if we don't see the breakthrough, we keep on worshiping and we keep on praising. Even if we don't see it, we keep on believing. Faith that I think a lot of us long for. That a lot of us have never actually fully understood. If we continue on in the story, in uh, verse 19, it says, Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. I don't even know if he had faith that his God was going to do something here. Seven times hotter? Seven times hotter. Then he ordered some of the strongest men in his army to bind. Like, it's unbelievable. The strongest men to, to, to bind these guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and throw them into the blazing, blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king in his anger had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed, exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Like, I, I did pretty well in, like, first grade. Like, I can count to, to three. This is four. Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, right? Like, how do you respond to that? Yep. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men, unbound, walking around in the fire unharmed. And the fourth looks like a god. You know, we sang a song about this earlier, but there's always another in the fire. You are not alone. Some of us, we feel so desperately alone. We feel like everything we're walking through, the adversity we're facing, the persecution we're facing, the pain that's in front of us, we feel so, so desperately alone in it. But you are not alone. I think the biggest thing that the enemy wants to do to us as believers is make us feel like we're alone. To make us feel like we're fighting the battle by ourselves, Because we're so much more vulnerable when we're alone, but the truth is we are not alone. And you know what the enemy uses to try and trick us? He says, no one else has gone through this. No one else has gone through what I'm going through right now. He tries to tell us, you can't tell them about your struggles because they don't actually know who you are. And what if they don't want to have a relationship with you anymore? The circumstances that we are in, that you are in right now, might be painful, might be dire, might feel hopeless. But you are not alone. You are not alone. And I really, we have to understand how present God actually is with us. You are never alone. There's always another in the fire. He's not only protecting us, but he's also standing in it with us. standing with us in the midst of it all he stands with us when you look around you all you might see is the gloom and the darkness but you we have to learn to open our eyes open our up ourselves to realize Jesus is standing right there with you that God is with you. He's there. He's loving you. He's protecting you. He's providing for you. He is there. Do you see Jesus? Do you see God standing with you? Because I think if we see God standing with us, our faith is a lot stronger. He is there. He's always there with you. 
even if the circumstance, even if the situation is something that we created. Maybe the hole we find ourselves in is one we actually took the spade and dug ourselves. He's still there. The depths of the earth, he will be there. The highest highs and the lowest lows, he will be there. He will never leave you and he will never forsake you. There's always another in the fire. You are not facing the furnace alone. And then in uh, verse 26, then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace. He's scared of the, his own furnace, but flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the most high God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the high officials, uh, officers, officials, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their head, out of their heads was singed and their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell of smoke. It's, it's so beautiful. This, this part, like, not even a hair was singed on them. Like, like, not even their clothes were ruined. And in verse 28, the Nebuchadnezzar said, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own. Therefore, I make this decree of any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They will be torn limb from limb. And their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There is no god who can rescue like this. Verse 30, then the king prom uh, promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. The last part I want to talk about is this, is that faith is contagious. See, the king, he was so uh, concerned about the statue he had built. And to be honest, it's probably, like, it was probably pretty beautiful, right? 90 feet high and, and like nine feet like It was this big thing and there was like a spectacle. and it was, He was probably pretty proud of this thing he had built. But then what's hilarious is that his statue didn't move. So what happens is he sees God rescue these three men. He goes, how? My God just sits there, bored. Your God moves. Your God heals. Your God rescues. It changed his entire demeanor, right? He goes from being so controlled with rage to being amazed and astonished and excited. Come out here. The God, the most high God, he even says these words. There is no other God who can rescue like this. Their faith, the faith of these three men. You gotta remember, there's there was thousands of people bowing down to the statue, and these three men said, I'm not doing that. Even if it means the end of my life, I am not bowing down. Their faith had the power to influence the, the leader of one of the most powerful nations. Imagine the king, right? Because the king had all this power, had all this influence. And it's probably one of the first times where three men said, I'm not going to let my faith waver. I'm not going to bow down. I'm going to be obedient to the Most High. I'm going to be obedient. They stood up. I never sat back down. Courage in the face of imminent death. You know, our courage and our faith is so contagious. I don't know if you've ever had moments like this, but I have a lot of friends who don't believe in, uh, don't believe in Jesus, they don't follow Jesus. And I'll share some of the things that God has walked us through, some of the most painful moments. 
some of the things that we go through and some of the hardships that we all have. And like, how are you okay? Like, that's a question. They literally ask, like, how? Like, it's not me. I have faith that God is going to provide. And even if he doesn't, I'm still going to let joy reign in my life. That even if everything falls apart, I'm going to let joy keep me going. It's not about what we have. It's not about what we see. We have to understand that it's about who we serve. It's about who we serve. You know, your faith has the power to influence your children. Your faith has the power to influence your workplace. It has the power to influence your job. It has the power to influence our church. It has the power to influence our city and our province and our nation and our world. It has the power to influence. But some of us, we're so, we've covered ourselves that the light is no longer shining. We're so afraid of standing out. We're so afraid of standing up. That our faith has become so small. But the beautiful thing, if you remember, Jesus talks about even if you have faith like a mustard seed. Even if your faith isn't as big as the giant in front of you. A small amount of faith can grow into something so big and so beautiful. You know, a lot of the time we feel like we don't have a voice. We don't feel like we don't have, that our words don't matter, that no one cares, that no one listens. If no one's listening to your words, then let your faith speak. Let your courage speak. You know, we fully believe that God is good and that God is taking care of us, right? We truly believe this. These three men, what did they do? They stood up for what they believed in. You know what people knew? They knew what they were for. They were for Jesus. They were for God. Even when no one else was standing, they were willing to stand up and it changed an entire nation. They believed that God would take care of them. That God would protect them. That God would save them. But their faith was in God was so strong that they knew he was good even if they didn't get what they hoped for. Even if. You know, our takeaway today is our faith isn't in what we see, it's in who we serve. But I really want us all to contemplate where our faith is right now. Where, where is your faith? Think about it. That even if, even if you don't see it, will you still have faith? Even if, our faith isn't in what we see, it's in who we serve.